There's a predator cop prosecuted for abusing 19 men in his custody. In St. Louis, uh, Marcellus Blackwell, a former St. Louis police officer, has been slammed with a 36 count indictment after a group of men came forward accusing Blackwell of groping, sodomizing, and other cruel claims of sexual abuse. Uh, look, this is his picture right here. Blackwell exposure began back in June when he was arrested for sexually assaulting a man whom he handcuffed near a high school court record show. In September, he was indicted in the federal court on 16 felonies after being accused of groping eight men he'd detained. Soon, more victims came out to share their experiences and expanded, my God, the list of counts. This is according to the rule. The federal indictment includes graphics, uh, graphic details of instances in which men accused Blackwell of sodomizing them with his fingers or finger and filling up under their clothing without the intent to do a police search. Authorities say, they recovered a slew of video and photo evidence of these allegation encounters of his personal and work phone, my guy, on his work phone. Some of those photos appeared to be taken covertly in areas like elevators or bathrooms, according to court documents, still sticking with the root. How he tried to cover up his crimes? The defendant acting in relation to and in contemplation of a matter within the jurisdiction of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, an agency of the United States knowingly altered, concealed, covered up, and falsified a record with the intent to impede, obstruct, and influence the investigation and proper administration of that matter. Specifically, the defendant knowingly altered, concealed, covered up, and falsified an NCPC record by including a false statement in his written report of the arrest. And that's what the document read according to the rule. Blackwell worked for the North County Police uh, Cooperative for just over a year until the men stated, uh, started, I'm sorry, coming forward with the, their testimonies per the St. Louis Post Dispatch. He resigned, followed, he resigned. How? Following the first indictment. Now he's facing 19 counts of deprivation of rights under color of law and 17 counts of altering records in a uh, federal investigation. The FBI in St. Louis encouraged anyone to dial 314-589-2682 to reach a hotline for any more people who wish to come forth about their encounters with the former cop. And that's according to the rule. I don't even know what to say about this except for my my guy that I first of all why in the hell are police officers taking people in the bathroom where and how did anybody allow that to happen without any questions arising this man was so brave that he didn't just use his personal phone he used his work phone which could be subjected to um uh, information request at any given time. This is a disgusting behavior. And we need to know if any other cops knew about this or why in the hell was he so comfortable using uh, police property to do this, uh, Ravana? Yeah, I mean, it definitely, the, you know, the extent to which he was abusing his position of power suggests that, you know, there needs to be an investigation, not just into him, but into the culture of the department that allowed this to go on for, you know, a full year before uh, before it was revealed, and only because of the bravery of the uh, the victims who came forward and reported his misconduct. Now, I do want to say, you know, I think that the right wing in America um, has done a really good job at rewriting what sexual assault is in terms more favorable to their uh, particularly misogynistic agenda. Uh, but they'll frame it as a crime of wanting to have sex with someone who doesn't want to have sex with you, which it is not. It is a crime of power. And that's why, you know, in this case, we see him in a position of power, abusing it uh, uh, to rape, to uh, sexually assault, and to molest these individuals, you know, who were men under his protection or were supposed to be under his protection. Um, not because, you know, you know, he might be a, a gay person or anything like that, but it is a crime of, uh, you know, getting off to you abusing your power. That's what the at the heart of sexual assault is it is a a crime of power abuse and that's why we see it a, a lot in prisons and we see it you know in police departments 
Um, but also he probably thought he could get away with it because there's a, a, you know, a shame to the victims that they often feel when coming forward, you know, particularly, uh, you know, if you've been abused by another man, an embarrassment that is wrong and no one should be forced to feel it, but it's been perpetuated in our society. So you often find that uh, uh, men who are the victims of sexual assault by other men are less likely to come forward about it. Um, because of that, the perpetuation of that that uh, stigma, that shame, despite the fact that they are victims and they were absolutely so brave to come forward and tell their stories, especially, you know, being individuals who are uh, you know, some of them incarcerated, who are under arrest, who are supposed to, you know, be under police protection uh, to some extent or in their care, as it were. Um, that they know that the system could then turn around and abuse them further just for coming forward with with their stories and and the crimes that were committed against them. So they're absolutely brave. Uh, and you know, they should be further protected down the line from, you know, potential retaliation from police departments for, you know, stepping forward and sharing their stories. No, you're you're absolutely right. And and, and, and it's so disgusting to me that, you know, people can't like you said, make this a, about power, and which it is. It's all it's about. Um, and we should not miss the moment right now to announce that. I mean, we're not even announce acknowledge what it means to be a woman in the hands of these people with this much mm-hmm. power over you, this much dominion over you. We see when women are transferred, uh, they're more likely to be sexually assaulted by police officers or correctional officers. So we this just highlight what it means to be in that much custody when people have the right to have dominion over you. And it's absolutely uh, something that this society, our society need to be working on and trying to figure out in a real way.